and women to not vote. And in some cases, they could not even own property. Imagine a time when women's maiden names were lost the minute they married. Imagine a climate in which a girl stood in the United States, even as in other countries less developed, did not have the same value as a boy student. And the two words, women and rights, were never mentioned together. Oh, there had been suffragettes, Susan B. Anthony and Carrie Nation, but generally the atmosphere was not sympathetic to girls. However, Juliet Gordon Lowe, founder of the Girl Scouts of the United States of America, decided that in order to have a healthy and productive society, women and girls should be addressed, and the girls should be addressed first. Juliet Gordon Lowe was born Juliet McGill Kinsey Gordon on October the 31st, 1860 in Savannah, Georgia. Before her marriage, Juliet had suffered from chronic ear infection. She had lost most of her hearing in one ear because of improper treatment. At her wedding, when she was 26, she lost hearing in her other ear after a grain of good luck rice thrown at the event lodged in her ear, puncturing her eardrum and resulting in an infection and total loss of hearing in that ear. With her sense so impaired and being a woman in that era, Judith Lowe wondered how she could possibly be of use to women in general and to the community in particular. It is interesting that she chose to come out in public rather than stay solitary within the walls of her well-appointed family home, as many women would have done at that time. Miss Lowe met Baden Powell, who had successfully formed the Boy Scouts of America organization. She examined the shape and plans of the Boy Scout organization and decided she would attempt to start a similar association for girls. Mrs. Lowe decided she would found an organization for girls alone. She did not expect it to be successful immediately. But with her positive approach to life, she did think it would be accepted by some women with daughters. Much to her surprise, the Girl Scouts of America became larger than anything Mrs. Lowe could have dreamed. In fact, today, most female leaders will state proudly that they encountered authority and discipline in the 20th century as members of the Girl Scouts organization. They proudly wear the badge and they proudly support the organization, which intends and intended to bring girls out of the kitchen to the office and from the sewing room into America's great hiking trails. These women have decided they are more than just old F-E-M-A-L-E-S. They proudly say that they are W-O-M-E-N, women, Girl Scouts of America, I salute you. Congratulations, celebrations for your 100th year. I can say that because I too was a Girl Scout. 